reflection is back. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Wow. And I presumably everybody here has just watched the dispatches. On Russell Brand. Mm. Um, obviously, there was footage of him going to... He's doing a live gig or was doing a live gig tonight. I'd be fascinated to know if he's talked about any of this in, in, in his gig. Obviously, he, uh, these are the accusations of... Strong accusations of rape, sexual assault, uh, controlling behaviour, coercive behaviour. Um, misogyny. Misogyny. Um, and we're going to talk about how many of you watched the, docu watched the documentary all the way through? An hour and a half. It's a, it's a big commitment in terms of screen time and potential evidence. Um, unforeseen, I watched it all. Hi everyone. Right, I'm gonna, can I, can I just throw my, my immediate response, I've got two different responses. In fact, I've got three different responses very quickly. I've got one, which is a response to the film, the documentary itself. The making of it. The making of it, the mm. construction of it, and the argument it was promoting. Two, I have a response to, just generally, I was reminded of how much of Russell Brand's kind of humour I just, just thought was Tasteless, Always awful. <laughs> tasteless and awful. Mm. And three, um, I was kind of left thinking, okay, how would this float in a legal situation? You know, how would this sort of be dealt with in a court of law? Um, well, yeah, it's been really interesting watching it and getting in texts from people throughout. And when you think about how many shocking allegations that there were right from the very first moment mm. of the opening of the show. And yet every single person's message that I've had has been, what do you think? What do you think? People shouldn't be left feeling this confused in a way. I think, mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quite strong on this. Mm. I think that the programme let down the victims because for me though the words were verbatim taken from their testimonies the fact that you had actors instead of someone in silhouette reading the words it came across as acting and that i can't believe not a single producer or anyone looked at that and thought right Am I, I being mad? No, you're not no, being mad at all. I would, I would my, go, I would go even stronger. I would go even stronger than that. If I was a commissioning editor, I would have pushed this back to the producers and said, until you've got one person who, admittedly, this is tough, this is difficult, this is challenging, I feel that this programme is going to fall down in areas where we don't want it to fall down for mm. the victim's sake because we don't have a single authentic talking head. And instead, mm. what they actually lent on, which I think was another mistake. Okay, so let's accept that they've got no one who's willing to talk for fear of, mm. you know, all the fears that the come with it. We totally understand all of those mm. fears. You don't do it in what I felt was a sort of faux, badly executed, semi-dramatic. You know, drama, if you know it's an actor, you don't cast. show a close-up of them fiddling no. with their thingies. You don't go to no. that creative detail. I'm sorry, you don't. And just in really simple terms, as I said to Mark, if somebody came, I didn't actually see this is performed by actors. If you were to come in in the middle of that pro, you would think that these are the victims mm. talking. And of course it doesn't come. <coughs> Very good actors, you know, but, but, but it's not the same. Mm. And This was a print I, story. This uh, was a print story. Yeah, and, and I just feel, all I could think the whole time when I was watching it is think, my God, if this was in a court of law, would not a lawyer just smash this to pieces? I mean, I don't know. This is totally just a lay woman's POV. Because I just feel, for instance, we saw first what the victims had said he'd said. Then they showed us clips of him saying almost the identical thing on his, in his stand-up. And I was thinking, but a lawyer... Now, I'm not saying the victims have lied. I'm not. I'm saying what could potentially happen in a court of law is a lawyer would say... Well, did you see Mr. Brand with his comedy act? Mm, very interesting that you've used the exact line that he uses in his... And the more I was watching it, I was thinking, could this be, if all these allegations are true, could we get to a point where he could never be brought to court because he couldn't get a fair trial? And I couldn't help feeling, shouldn't this be with the police instead of with a TV mm. channel? 
I mean, I, I mean, well, the oddest thing about the whole thing was I found the most uncomfortable aspects of all of it were obviously what was being said, but I felt what was being said by the kind of, you know, the interviewees that weren't the interviewees mm. was because it was mediated through actors and it was mediated through what I thought was some pretty crass, dramatic kind of notes. Mm. Both music, both silhouette, both shot, you know, mm. you just didn't need it. You just didn't it's need it. It's a serious thing. Um, but, but by approaching it like that, it mediated that. What I was reminded of was how I found so much of his humour misogynistic, anti-woman, unfunny, inappropriate, and yet... At the same time, not forgetting that was his shtick, that was his that thing. That was his shtick. That's what he did. I mean, I, I met him a couple of times on Loose Women. He's coming as an interviewee, and I found him absolutely charming. Quite, quite like, gentle and soft in between when he was on. So, you know, you meet a lot of people that have some very strange on-screen personas. And so I just thought, oh, he just, like, massively highlights this on screen. Of course, the connotations and the... You know, the suggestions are that this whole thing has been built up to protect himself, you know, from ever being uh, challenged or accused of anything because he could say, well, that's just been my shtick. And, you know, um, loads and loads of films of people really responding to it and giggling with it. You know, I'll take your knickers off or do this or do that. Rather like all the bits of film that we've been shown over the years, and I'm not mm. likening him to Jimmy Savile, but I'm saying a similar feeling where there was this persona and people are like a bit shocked like your mum would say well why were these women laughing I said well because often you laugh because you're embarrassed because you, you, well. you can't believe a person is saying what they're saying Look, let, let um, me, I mean one of the things I have a problem with him and I do have a problem with him and my problem with him it, it does pivot around the whole addiction thing I talked earlier this morning in coffee moaning about sex addiction it's a thing I know lots of people like to think it's some kind of excuse just someone who likes lots it of really sex. isn't I've been in rehab and I've been with sex addicts and it is the most it wasn't a sex addict potentially one of the most <laughs> crippling conditions um, and doesn't always and in fact rarely presents in a way that encroaches upon the welfare sanctity safety of someone else i.e they it doesn't a sex addict doesn't equal rapist no. at, at all um, it's about self-harm it's about the fact that your addiction or compulsion to watch pornography masturbate have serial relationships take make risky decisions in love and in sex and what have you is more damaging to your life than you know the cost to your life is more than the sort of enjoyment if you like <clears throat> my worry and my problem with him has always been and i've always had that had a, a real dilemma around this is we will never fully know to what extent he has baked into his on-screen or on-stage persona the sort of a gallows humour about his addiction and his, his relationship with sex. We'll never know the extent to which perhaps that could be or could have been in some way. And let's not forget, all addicts, having been one, can be manipulative with the truth and don't want to share the truth. And, you know, they'll lie to get their next fix and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to factor that all into it, too. It's a very complicated state of mind, the addict, because, if, you know, to what extent has he baked into his on-screen performance or on-stage performance the, the idea... The ability to get his drug. The ability to get his drug. Or, or you could argue he, very, he too successfully baked it into his performance so that the dividing line between the two is perilously difficult. Now... Or it could just be his performance. Precisely. I mean, there's just so many... But there were enough examples in here. There were enough kind of secondhand... And, and it has to be stressed, there was a strap that went up with one of the... I can't remember which one strap, it was. That's when they, you know, when, you know, when they put a sort of intertitle up, where they had someone had said something about what had happened to that. I think it was the woman who felt that she'd been sexually assaulted. I don't think it was the, the alleged rape victim. Mm. And the programme put up a, on the screen, it said, the, the journalists on this programme spoke to three people who said... She said that she'd been assaulted. Now, that might be true, and, and that's not something... But in a court of law, that ain't going to stand up. That is total hearsay and total speculation. Mm. Someone saying someone said something. And you made an interesting point, which is if, as the papers and the press that's been around this all day has, has led us to believe that this was going to be so damning, if it's damning enough and convincing enough, why aren't we in a court of law with the yeah. rape accusation? I don't understand. If... It, it, does it take something? Doesn't something like is this it, ruin the capacity be, to go to court? Could it be that these uh, um, women don't want to go to court? Because it's a brutal thing to go to. Well, court. I mean, that would I mean, tally with the fact that they didn't want to appear in the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, and maybe they just can't face the thought of that, but they can do this because they're, you know, they can be. 
can be anonymous. I mean, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to go to court. I wouldn't want to. I, I mean, I just wouldn't want to. I wouldn't I mean, want to have my face on a TV show. I just wouldn't. I got really chilling I, I moments, and, and again, I, I'm still in that process of unpacking the extent to which. How was this manipulated by the program? Was it manipulated by the program at all, we or don't. were we being manipulated by life? Like around this moment, Shagger of the Year in the Sun newspaper. You know, also uh, the, the paper that the owns the Times. Same paper, same people own the Times and the Sun, and the Times has run the story today. The Sun was running him as Shagger of the Year. And when I was seeing that, I was I, I started to think, oh my God, are we looking at another but that, but, in but, plain sight but Jimmy Savile situation? The awful thing was, this was different <coughs> times. It didn't mean they were the right times, but they were different times. We yeah. had butt of the year, tits of the year, you know. This is the way that we used to used to talk, you know. I mean, when they were showing the clip of him on stage, when he was talking about how you'd get a girl back and he'd say, well, I'll sleep on the sofa. Oh, da-da-da-da-da-da. It wasn't funny. Yes, it's gross. But actually, that is the way of bringing somebody back to the flat, isn't it? It was observational docu It was observational comedy. Mm, you know, mm. it's all that language to get someone oh, coming back for a coffee, want to come back from my etchings. It's extreme yeah, really comedy really, yeah. of which mm. you would fill theatres mm. packed full and they would be laughing until their stomachs hurt. You know what I mean? This is what is just so difficult about it now, mm. because of course that would be unacceptable now. I mean, the thing that I'm coming out of this and with... I and thought I thought Lorraine Hegarty was very good. The, the, she was the... Well, oh, she was the only real interview. She was really good. And she, what, what she, did she said say? was very, very important. She <laughs> Crucially said... Crucially important. She was head of the BBC, mm. um, and she was saying... <coughs> he was me. allowed to get away with a terrible behaviour... <clears throat> The more that happened and the more success he got, the more he believed he could do whatever he wanted and on and on and on. And we we just see that all the time. That happens in, with so in many TV presenters. and film and anywhere. But but you you do, they create their own monsters. Mm. You create your monsters and you know, and I'm now I'm not talking at this point mm. about Russell Brown because everything yeah, you're is right. alleged. The PA, the PA was real too. Everything yeah. is alleged. Mm. But you know, there is in many, many businesses, not just show business, where people are too scared to say anything. And there is a hierarchy and there is such a thing as being in awe of power because people will say, yeah, but I mean, you know, he was famous and people were attracted to it. Yeah, they are. But they also, I think, as the person in power, the person who's the star, the person who is the one who has all the glory should also have the conscience and mm. should also be aware that somebody, does this person really, really fancy me or is this person a bit in awe of me and the fact mm. that I'm famous, you know? So where, there's a lot, the culpability is there and I just don't think bosses often enough draw attention stand to, to the, that. Stand yes. up to the plate. Stand well, they don't stand up to the plate. And ironically, yes. Lorraine Hegarty was the, you know, okay, apart from the PA, you're absolutely right, but, um, you know, the PA talked about the idea that, was it but she who PA... talked about the idea that they were pimps and they were, they were kind of fetching people from the but audience the PA... and all this kind of stuff? If I'm looking at it in a cold, hard light of day, and you're looking at it from a from a from in a court of law, what she was talking about was a right ass. Yeah. You know, a right egomaniac. Mm. There, there are a thousand stories of runners and researchers going and makeup girls going to makeup rooms and person just in their pants. So all very, very unpleasant. But she also said. She had no hint of any sort of sexual assault or rape or anything. She had no understanding of that. She did, didn't she? Mm -hmm. What she was, what she was describing, one. I felt, was an egotistical star. I thought he could just do whatever he wanted, but at no point did she say anything about sexual assault, did she? No, and and the important the important part the other thing that struck me quite starkly at one point was I was being reminded of a lot of what was said in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. And if you go, if you dig into what was being alleged in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case, it was infinitely more specific. It was, you know, stuff involving bottles and what have you and penetration. You know, it, there was so much detail in there. Horrible. And yet so much of it, again, not getting into the weathers and wherefores and all that kind of stuff, but it, the evidence was falling down at su in such quick succession. With, with the lack of, with hearsay, with a lack of hard and fast kind of, you know, my worry is what's happened here is, and I think what fundamentally possibly this documentary is about, as the email right at the end said was, this is a kind of 
put it out there in order to see if more people will, will, will which contact, is, which, which is, is what right. the police do. Yeah. But that, but but I, I mean, I don't know anything about the law, but I assume once all these stories out, if somebody comes back with a similar story, they can be told that, well, you've heard this on the documentary. I just worry that the <clears> victims <throat> are going to be just totally forgotten about in all of this. This yeah. is not to say that his attitude, Alleged. I mean, my, you know, I, I am so confused and left kind of just with m many more questions. And I, I was expecting it to be a kind of slam dunk, clear case that, right, oh, okay, bish, bash, bosh. Um, I, I, and I don't think it necessarily is. And I don't think the programme did, it did itself any favours to make it, to make, yeah, I did. I, I thought, thought we get secret filming. Because it was an hour and a half, yeah. and because it's been a very yeah. long time that they've been... Um, that they've been making yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, I thought that it was there was going to be reams of secret filming mm. because... Can I ask a question, though? Well, you, a lot of you are mentioning Faith you have. The Jimmy Savile moment, which is just an absolutely... It was, for me, one of the most uncomfortable moments in the whole, whole programme. Um, and just to be reminded, actually, that even quite recently in years, 10 years or whatever it was, that Jimmy Savile was still alive. I, sometimes I sort of cast, yeah. I sometimes forget We like forget to think that it actually, was 100 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I mean, for example, his first tweet went off to someone like Philip Schofield or something like that, didn't it? I mean, you know, so the idea that, you know, he was around when social media was starting. And everybody, and, and there are so many clips of people with Jimmy Savile well, like that, we go, that we go, oh my yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Now, and, now, even... Could, is there an argument, because it was hideous, and that hideous. poor newswoman oh. that he was throwing under under the bus, and then when they were told off, clearly he'd obviously had a, someone had been brave enough to have a conversation with him to say, look, this is unforgivable, you're distressing this other female news presenter, or weather presenter, whatever she was, um, and she's not happy, she's distressed, and then he does that thing, which is the most passive aggressive thing talent can do, which is talks about that very discussion on camera, so that then that will humiliate her even more. Yeah. I thought for me that you, you're it's looking so clearly at a dereliction yeah. of, of, of duty when but, it comes but to the why, power where was, And that's what Lorraine Hegarsey, the ex-head of the BBC, said, where were the people giving him a bollocking for doing that on air? That, that's, yeah, exactly. I mean, he should have been Where were the execs? I'd forgotten that awful thing he said about Andrew, Andrew Sachs, Sachs on the radio. Do you remember that? That was just awful. Jonathan Ross didn't seem to and get as much. And what was going on with Bob Geldof? I missed that. What beginning. now? Big question. That any program? If I was sat in the rough cut of that, the first question I'd have asked was, "Do we know why Bob Geldof called him a cunt?" That, that would be. Was my... that all that it said? Because I was, I was. It just said he didn't like him. So an award ceremony, oh. and it was a really important moment where I thought, "Good God, he's going to elucidate." We're going to. Well, we might even get an, a bit of interview with Bob Geldof. I don't know. I just thought we'd get something, some kind of explanation. What did you? What did you feel? Excuse when... my use of the language. I should have pre-warned. Well, what, it was in what, the documentary. What What was the? Uh, what did you feel about? the comedian that came on and spoke, because I, I'd never heard of him, but no. a couple of friends of mine that are comedians straight, straight away texted me and said, wow, this is big, this person coming out and talking like this, because it is scary to put your name out. And, and I was like, well, are they very respected? Mm. Oh yeah, very well respected. And you know, everyone will respect this person even more for coming. He looked really nervous. He looked really scared mm. about it, didn't mm. he? Mm. And so I think it was odd. He was sort of placed almost down the bottom of the programme. But that might, you know what? I mean, anyone who's going to appear in something like this, he will have asked the question, who else is talking? And he will have had to have been told at some point, no, no one, one else is talking. That would make anyone shit a brick. In any, in any sense. Very brave Even if you yeah, Very brave of him, very brave of him. What did you think of that guy? Did you know who he was? Did that give some weight to, to the programme and... Did anybody... I mean, I mean, let's look at the poll here. We've got well, no, no, 350 no. people have voted. Do you believe Russell Brand is guilty of what they've suggested? It's really close. Wow. 53% say yes, 47% say no. Can I tell you the last time there was the same split uh, was at the beginning Johnny of the Depp. Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Mm. And one has to be really careful because it's, it's too easy in misogynistic land to want to defend someone because you think they're quite likable or quite nice or perhaps haven't been quite understood. So, you know, you know, I know I know that we kind of lent towards Johnny Depp, most people lent towards Johnny Depp. You've got to be careful in the rationale. We spent we. days and days and yeah, we. Because it sounds like you're saying to the, whoever no, voted no. No, 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 no. We, 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 <laughs> yeah. we, we as, as people, as people. Yeah, 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 we have yeah, to yeah, be, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you all have to. You can have a strong opinion, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can't be dissuaded if the proof. Yeah, exactly. If the burden of proof is there. I mean, I think the thing that's come out of this is, and certainly from 
friends of ours and stuff that we've been talking to, is that everybody is left feeling, A, very unnerved and uncomfortable with just how horrible the whole thing was, but also just really concerned about the actual programme. I and think did I've it been do left, yeah, yeah, more yeah. harm than good for a potential case, a potential. Cause. I think I've come out of it shocked and surprised that I wasn't absolutely kind of told what the facts were. Big headline for me I don't, is the actors. I and just the think actors, it was just but the actors were very good. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying that, but it's just Beth Scammell. Used... Beth Scammell says the documentary was pointless. Yeah. It was, I'm telling you now, yeah, because, the okay, Times ran a print a really story point. this morning. That's it was a, really a print good point. story, that's what I mean by that. It was a print story. They have simply sought to exploit a print story that already ran at four o'clock today in the Times. They gave us nothing new. Well, except lots of clips of Russell. Yeah, but... That what, could stand up the story. But even the, but what they've done is what you've said. They've used clips that any really good defence lawyer in court would look at and go... Or any oh, really right. shit defence really lawyer. Because I don't know anything about the law and it yeah. was the first thing I thought. He's like, oh, all so, right, so you just lifted that, did you? It seems very like... That. Yeah. I mean, you, a defence lawyer will say, OK, well, the mascara thing, which was a hideous joke. Oh, it was hideous, tasteless. Hideous. It was horrible. Blech. But any defence lawyer is gonna, gonna, will do this, and they did it in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. They will make sure they know when that defendant or a person who's accusing him of, of what he's done, when did you first see that footage? And they will need proof of that. Well, they would just say, I've never seen the footage. No, 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 no. but my point, yeah, but then it would become hearsay, then it would mm. become how do we have proof, you know, and, and hearsay, speculation, all those words that we heard them all screaming God, all the time. you know, I was thinking all the way through it, I was thinking... Because nothing has been proven yet in a court of law. This is still all allegations against Russell Brand. Um, but I, I, I couldn't help thinking all the way through it. How do these victims mm. feel mm. What, watching? How they will have got access to it, presumably, beforehand. Mm. But um, how will they have been feeling when, when they watched it? Faith Goodman asks a question which I'm going to read because I think it goes to the heart of... of a really problematic aspect of not just this, but also most of the Me Too kind of... What is your opinion about the women who went after famous men, pop, rock, sports stars in their hotels? Is it the man's fault or are the women going there wanting sex? I am not 100% sure. Who's this? Faith. Faith. You're asking the question around... So, for example, there was a moment in the film, in the documentary tonight, where someone said he, he slept with five women in a day. We can all have a judgment on whether that's right, tasteless, uh, you know, you know, insulting to women, misogynistic, using them, all this kind of stuff. But if each woman has willingly done that, yeah. and the payoff of that is the frustration that he hasn't got back in touch with you, you aren't special, it doesn't reach beyond that one moment, and that leaves you feeling aggrieved, that in and of itself isn't a crime. No. Sadly. It's... it's, it's <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fucking, it's fucking horrible. It's not nice. It's not a crime. But and I'd want to tear his fucking bollocks is... off if my daughter was one of them. But it's not a crime. But you know that the one of the one of the victims who was talking about how they'd had a relationship. I think she said they'd met in AA, but I we, mm. I missed a line there. Mm. But and she was talking about how you know she. Was, I want to make it really clear. It was consensual. She liked him. She really liked him. They had a lot of fun. But you know, then when that moves on you know, weeks down the line and you were, she was in the situation that she said she was in and she notices that the door is locked. For then it to be used or brought up, well, you know, you knew he was famous and you liked it, you know, it goes back to the old thing. You can change your mind at any point. Mm. You can say no at any point and the other person is supposed to respect that. Mm. You know, so... And just because somebody is, you know, might be completely seduced by the fame, by power, by money. Well, who are we to say that anything that we're seduced by could be then thrown back at us, mm. you mm. know? And so... Someone made a really interesting point, and you know on our channel, we're not defenders of narcissists at all. But to be a narcissist is not to be a rapist. Yeah. Um, you know, that, you know, and I think... I just want to know why it hasn't gone to some kind of criminal level because the headlines are criminal behaviour. Um, what, what's, what's a channel supposed to do? I mean, if there's an investigation or a newspaper and they, they come across, you know, stories or evidence of a crime, are they supposed to, before they go ahead with a programme, 
offer that evidence to police? Or is that not that obligation? I mean, I've, no, I've never worked specifically on criminal, criminal programming, but I would have thought they would have to... I mean, there has, when you're working with contributors, yeah. members of the public and also presenters... You do have to check their criminal background Actually, and everything else. Actually, you're always else. asked, aren't you're you? You're always anything. asked, yeah, what, anything that comes up. But so they are, were talking to checks. anyone with a criminal background. They were talking to victims and they were talking to well, victims. I'd be fascinated too. to know what the legals are, you know, yeah. in, terms of every, in terms of the reporting of this, you know, because what was, what was the headline today? I posted it on Coffee Moaning Instagram, so it, it was something along the lines of Russell Brand accused, uh, you know, criminal accusations. Aren't, aren't they, aren't they, who, I was going to say, aren't they criminal only once they have been taken to court and there is an Found, actual prosecution, yeah. you know, Found underway? Mm. You know, I don't know. I mean, obviously, now, the other part of this that we haven't talked about is it, an enormous number of people and a huge part of the, of the uh, online community, it feels that this is a... Serious a, allegations. It feels that this is a an assault on and an attempt to stop someone... Uh, who's kind of, you know, challenging the status quo, challenging the accused of rape, sexual assaults. Oh, OK, it doesn't say come on. That's the um, You know, and, and, the, and that because he's upsetting the apple cart and he's not towing the party line, actually, this is the, this is the establishment. <coughs> i tell you what I was a bit surprised by and a bit confused by. Dispatches, Channel 4 programme, Channel 4 refused to reveal any information. I didn't understand that bit. BBC. Oh, yeah, because that's a data protection. They're, yeah. they're bound by... Yeah, uh, but, but then also, I was surprised also that Channel 4 News sort of embed with The Times and The Sun. I, I, so I'm fascinated to know what the kind of connections are up there editorially somewhere. Um, but, but yeah, so there's a lot of people feeling that this is a, 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 this is a sort of ca a, a calculated attack on someone who challenges the state. Yeah, that's a and lot the status of that quo. online. But I would, I would counter that by saying, OK, that could be the case, but how do we know or not know whether, going back to my idea that he's baked his sex addiction into his persona and potentially into all. his behaviour... That's what we think. How do we know that, that uh, actually what he's done for the last two or three years is create a sort of cult of his own, of celebrity, if you like, that means that everyone... He knows he's got million, millions of people... 28 million followers. Yeah, exactly. 28 million. Yeah. Um, here's another question... Hmm. So, as Trollala just said, do you think this programme was to, as we were talking about that earlier, Trollala, that um, is to bring in other victims? I think victims. so. But is that the job of a TV, of a channel? <laughs> that, that's, that's what I question. just can't come to terms with. Is not that the job of the police? Because how many discussions have we had over the years about the wrongs and rights of the police talking, putting out into the public victims that have come forward and they then will say won't they the police but this is we throw out the net to bring in other victims to make a stronger case but at that point we don't know what those victims have said mm. because of this thing of like they want you know they might copy the stories and mm. then it blows apparently the russell it's is famous. live on youtube go to um. his go to his um apparently russell brand is live on youtube now is he um, I, I thought he would be. I thought he, I, he's not one to kind of go quietly. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just think, you know what the other thing is, on a purely practical matter, they could have done themselves, it didn't need to be an hour and a half. It really didn't need oh, to yeah, be an hour and a half. It needed to be an hour. Is he on? Who's that? That's not Russell Brand. No, but I think that's somebody talking to him. Yeah, it's his channel. Let's go to the live playlist. Hmm. Sorry, I was just seeing if he's... No. no, no, I don't think he's live. I don't think so. No, he's not. don't think so. No. Oh, it's 11. Oh, any minute now. OK, well, look, let's head off. Guys, just looking at the... Look at this. This is interesting. Look at the poll. Now with double the number Good of votes, 565, 50-50, right down 50 -50. the middle. 50-50. And we're all talking reasonably balanced. It's yeah. on balancing both sides of the kind of equation. That's interesting. I wonder, as producers of the programme, how would they feel about that? Yeah. That they've left people 50-50. Is that what they would expect? Is that what they wanted? Is that... And Erin Bullimore, everyone needs to stop asking why these women didn't call the police. Victims mostly don't call the police. Victims of rape don't want to have to go through the trauma exactly. of the police and justice systems. So... Um... Exactly. So that's your that's your rationale How absolutely many... as to why perhaps it hasn't been brought to to court. Um, but 
How many people do I know, mm. women do I know, through my mm. life what, that have had a sexual, been sexually assaulted or raped and the very last thing on the list they would do mm. is tell the police. Look, this is a but good point. But also, um, just talking about it at all, you know, even to a TV show, it's, it's yeah. Gemma Hill, considering the amount of support for uh, Russell Brand on social media today, it's easy to see why the alleged victims wouldn't want to go to the police or make themselves known to the public. And, that, and to be honest with you, that's what I'm sort of saying. Has he managed in the last two to three years, how long has he had a sense that this possibly is coming? Could, could you look at his kind of following and his popularity as his sort of newly acquired, you know, cover, if you like? Um, Do, okay, so, but they've stayed anonymous. So with the police, they wouldn't be allowed to stay anonymous. I, I can't get I that. I think they would really actually. No, we don't know, we're just ruminating. So now, but... now the poll has tipped over to 51%. Slight majority believes that he is not guilty of what they've suggested. Wow. This is fascinating, fascinating. It really is. Okay, well, it'll be interesting and to know... And of course... We don't know. We don't know, because no. at the moment, the way it stands at the moment, because it's a TV company and, and not a court of law, we don't, we don't know. <coughs> and he has 100% refuted every one of the allegations and has said that he has proof because there were other people at certain times mm. and places that would be able to say this didn't happen. So mm. that's where it stands at the moment. And, mm. you know, until proven guilty. Okay, well, let's see what he has to say. And I'm yeah. sure we'll be talking about this again. Okay. All right, guys, no, no, sleep guys. tight. Bye.